Real, real, Jesus is real to me. Oh, yes, he gives me the victory. So many people doubt him. I can't live without him. That is why I love him so. He's so real to me. My God, he's real, real. Jesus is real to me. Oh, yes, he gives me the victory. So many people doubt him. I can't live without him. That is why I love him so. He's so real to me. My God, he's real, real. Jesus is real to me. Oh, yes, he gives me the victory. So many people doubt him. I can't live without him. That is why I love him so. He's so real to me. My God, he's real, real. Jesus is real to me. Oh, yes, he gives me the victory. So many people doubt him. I can't live without him. That is why I love him so. He's so real to me. Well, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning. God bless you. Good morning. Good morning, Sister Patia. God bless you, Deacon and Sister Shy. Good morning, Roxanne Freeman. God bless you. Good morning. Good morning, Patia. Good morning, Reese. God bless you, Sister Eleanor. Good morning, Brother Henderson. God bless you and Sister Lisa. Good morning, Lamp of God's girl. Good morning, Sister Jackson. God bless you. Good morning. God bless you. Patia, good morning, Reese Cup, good morning, Jonah Lisco, God bless you, Sister Pinckney, good morning, good morning, God bless you, Elder and Sister Dorset, praise the Lord to you, God bless you, A.R.H. Green, I believe that is, God bless you, good morning, good morning, Minister Rose, God bless you, Grace Abound, good morning, Brother Giles, God bless you, good morning, good morning, Deacon and Sister Pope, God bless you, well, good, Alicia Green, God bless you, Sister Alicia, thank God for you. Good morning, Bishop and Mother Joseph. God bless you, your family, and all the saints of Trinidad, Tobago. Good morning, Missionary Domingo. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Briscoe. Good morning, Sister Mary. Good morning, Caleb. God bless you, Verna. Good morning, Sister Jackson Perry. God bless you, Brother Terrence, and your family. Good morning, Mother Walker. God bless you. Good morning, Bailey. God bless you, friend. Good morning. Bishop and Lady Alde, God bless you, your family, and all the saints of the Allegheny Diocese. Good morning. Good morning, Sister Winters. Good morning, Minister Hodges. God bless you, sir. Good morning, Sister Jessica. Good morning, Angela, my dear sister. God bless you. Good morning, Deacon Grant. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Bazin. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Coleman. God bless you. God bless you. Deacon Briggs. Good morning, Sister Banks. God bless you. Sister Kimberly. God God bless you. Praying for you and your family. Good morning, Sister Cleckley. Good morning, Deacon and Sister Graves. God bless you. God bless you, Lydia. God bless you, Katrina and your family. Good morning, Duchess. God bless you, Brother Aaron. Good morning, Minister and Mother Morris. God bless you. Well, praise the Lord and good morning, everybody. And welcome to the morning prayer with Pastor Reginald Davis. And as always, it's an honor, a privilege, and a pleasure to be able to bring to you a biblical meditation and prayer for more things have been wrought by prayer than the world will ever know and saints every single day i see the benefit of prayer prayer helping prayer strengthening prayer giving guidance and direction prayer leading us through challenging situations yes everybody deals with challenges everybody deals with tests and trials and circumstances but you know prayer covers us and prayer keeps us and we are grateful 
for the influence and the power of prayer. As always, if you have a prayer request, we want you to share it with us. If you're on Facebook, please place it into the chat or you can inbox Reginald Davis or inbox Refuge Temple Church. If you're on Instagram, you can place it into the chat or you can direct message Pastor RJD. And to everybody that's on the conference call, everybody that joins us, I thank God for our conference call prayer warriors. Everybody that's on Instagram, thank God for each of you. Everybody that's on YouTube, thank God for you. You can share your prayer requests through our text number, which is 336-567-5358. That is 336-567-5358. You can text in your prayer requests. We're adding them to the prayer list. We're praying over them, and we are believing God with you for miracle signs and wonders. Let's go into the scripture today. You'll find us in Proverbs chapter 20 again, and I want to read verses 17 through 20. 17 through 20. Proverbs chapter 20, verses 17 through 20. The Bible says, bread of deceit is sweet to a man, but afterwards his mouth shall be filled with gravel. Every purpose is established by counsel and with good advice make war. He that goeth about as a talebearer revealeth secrets. Therefore meddle not with him that flattereth with his lips. Whoso curseth his father or his mother, his lamp shall be put out in obscure darkness. His lamp shall be put out in obscure darkness. I want to talk to you this morning from the thought communication precepts, communication precepts. Um, it's clear that many people don't know how to communicate. Um, they lack the skills um, to speak, engage verbally in a manner that is forthright or a manner that is intelligent or a manner that is um, reflective of or respectful. And people battle with communication. You know, probably one of the biggest uh, struggles in all relationships, whether it's marriage or family or church or business or friendship, is communication. How we communicate with each other. Do we communicate with each other? Do we share? Do, do we disclose? Do we give information? And, and strangely enough, most people communicate with the wrong people. Let me say that again. Most people communicate with the wrong people and they fail to communicate with the right people. We, we talk and we talk and we talk and just because somebody knows how to talk doesn't mean they know how to communicate. They know how to verbalize. They know how to express. We've been talking, many of us, since we were about two years old. So we know how to talk, hallelujah, but do we know how to communicate? And there's a difference. There's a, we, we've, most of us have been writing since we were about six years old, but do we know how to communicate? Some of us have learned how to type and learn how to use word processors and all of this, but do we really know how to communicate? And, and Solomon gives us some precepts that I want to um, point out and I want to reflect today that will better help us be able to communicate effectively. Because what you want is for communication to create understanding. Let me say that again. You want your communication to create understanding that what I share, what I talk about, what I write, what I disclose is somehow going to be able to create better understanding with the people in which I live. That my family, my friends, my associates, my church members, my colleagues in business, I want to be able to know that what I share, what I verbalize, what I write is going to create create greater understanding among people. So let's deal with some precepts of communication. The first one is um, honesty and integrity. Do we communicate honestly? The Bible teaches us that we should speak the truth in love. Now, you have one of two things happening. Either people aren't speaking the truth or they aren't doing it in love. They're speaking the truth with the intent of hurting your feelings. 
And you should never intend to hurt somebody's feelings. You might intend to great raise awareness. You might intend to um, share information. You might intend to convey your emotions. But it's never designed to hurt. Because if you're speaking the truth in love, your intent is not to hurt. Your intent is to communicate. And the Bible says, look at this. Some people don't communicate honestly. Look at what the Bible says. The bread of deceit is sweet to a man. Hallelujah. That that means that you're deceiving and you feel slick and you feel like you're getting over and you feel like you're conniving somebody, misleading somebody, swaying somebody's thoughts or opinions. But look at what the Bible says. Afterwards, his mouth shall be filled with gravel. That it's a deadly thing. It's a deadly thing. It's not a tasteful thing. It's not something that is sought after to deceive. You don't try to get over on people. You try to communicate honestly. You want Want them to see and understand your perspective, but the goal is not to deceive. The goal is to speak the truth in love. Say it in a manner that is, is, is acceptable, that can be received, that can be understood, because the goal is to, hallelujah, change mindsets. The goal is to give information. The goal is to help people make sound and rational decisions, and communication has to be a part of it. But the Bible says this, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. That the mouth is a reflection of really what is going on inwardly in the spirit. So if you find yourself being verbally aggressive, if you find yourself hurting people with what you say, if you find yourself deceiving people with what you say, it is an indicator of what is actually in the heart. It is an indicator of what is actually inward inside of a person. So it's important that your heart is right so your speech will be right. It is important that your heart is right so that your speech will be right. Look at verse number 18. Every purpose is established by counsel. Hallelujah. Every purpose. In other words, what is the plan? What is the goal? What is the objective? Is established by discussion, by counsel. And this is important that you not make any decision haphazardly. That you not make decisions. That you not make plans without careful consideration. And that's why everybody needs somebody with whom they can confide, somebody with whom they can share, somebody that will listen reflectively and give them honest and corrective feedback so that what they say makes sense and the act action that follows the speech will make sense. Because look at this, and with good advice, make war. Now remember, Solomon was a king. And before he would go to war with a nation, before he would put the armies and deploy them, hallelujah, to attack an enemy, to attack somebody nearby, to attack a foreign enemy, he would sit down and have counsel. He would talk to his advisors, his political advisors, his military advisors, his spiritual advisors, all to get a perspective so that when he makes that decision, he makes the right decision. And this is important because if you're planning for the family, if you're planning for the church, if you're planning for your business, for your career. You've got to be able to engage those people that you're planning with and give them information so that they can give you counsel, so that they can give you advice, so that they can give you what is needed so that you make a good and sound decision. What you don't want to do is either not talk about it or what you don't want to do is make a decision without hearing a variety of perspectives. The reason why some people make messes is because they don't listen to the perspectives that are around them. They think there's only one way to look at it and that's their way. But there's another way to look at anything. There's another way to consider almost anything and you've got to be able to talk about it, get those perspectives so that you can make a sound and rational decision. But that's important that you have that dialogue in order to be able to communicate effectively. Verse 19, he that goeth about as a tale bearer revealeth secrets. Therefore meddle not with him that flattereth with his lips. This scripture, this scripture jumped out at me because you know what? I have discovered the truthfulness. Hallelujah. I learned, hallelujah, somebody will tell you the hard way. I learned that trusting people can be challenging because the same people 
people you trust are the same people that are tale bearers. They carry the tales of the places. They carry the tales to other people, people that don't need to hear it. People that don't need to know it, but they're out there sharing it. And you know what? The, and, and, and this reveals how they get in. They get in through flattery. They get in through flattery. People get into your confidence by flattering you, telling you what they think you want to hear, telling you how great you are, how anointed you are, how gifted you are, how smart you are. And all the while they're there to siphon information. Let me just tell you, they're there to siphon information. They're, give, they're telling you, oh, there's nobody like you. You're the best this. You're the best that. You're the best whatever. And they're giving you all of that flattery. Battery, and what are they doing? They're breaking down your mental defenses because most of us just don't reveal stuff to people randomly. Most of us don't reveal intimate secrets to people randomly. But when people flatter you, their flattery is for the purpose of breaking down your defenses. They want to break down your mental barriers. They want to break down your mental boundaries, all with the attempt of trying to tell, get information from you and as soon as you shared it as soon as soon as you've articulated they're out there giving it to somebody else oh did you hear what so and so said to me let me tell you what they said to me and then you're trying to figure out well, how did I share it you're trying to figure out how did it get out there they got to you through flattery so when people flatter you say thank you all right, be polite, say thank you, but don't take that flattery to heart because there is an ulterior motive. That's what Solomon is saying. There's an ulterior motive that is being utilized here. They're trying to get information. They're trying to get information. They're trying to get gossip. They're trying to get slander. They're trying to get something to share. And somebody said to me years ago, a dog that will bring a bone will carry a bone. So be careful what they're telling you about other people what they're revealing to you about other people because what are they doing? They're breaking down the boundaries. They're breaking down the barriers with the intent of trying to get information that they can use later on against you. That's why, hallelujah, I'm not, none of us are under arrest, I pray, but there's some truth to the Miranda statement that says you have the right to remain silent. Oh God, you have the right to remain silent. Sometimes people are talking to you, but you have have the right to remain silent. They're trying to flatter you into foolishness, but you have the right to remain silent. And don't be afraid to say, I don't have anything to say. Oh God, don't be afraid to say, I don't feel comfortable talking about this. Don't be afraid to say, you know what? It's just not a good idea for me to talk right now. I'm praying about it because there's somebody out there trying to break down the boundaries and they're using flattery to do it so that they can carry the gospel. Look at verse 20 and then we're going to close. Whoso curseth his father or his mother, his lamp shall be put out in obscure darkness. You know, one it, it, it's sad, but it's true that the people that we tend to be the most verbally aggressive towards are people that we're supposed to love. Let me say that again. The people that we tend to be the most verbally aggressive towards are the people we are supposed to love. You know, our spouses. And we talk to them sometimes any kind of way and think it's okay to be verbally aggressive to your husband or to your wife. That's wrong. And it's wrong to be verbally aggressive to your parents. And that's what this particular text is speaking, that if you curse your father or curse your mother, if you use hateful, horrible language to somebody for whom you should have respect, and I can apply this further, be careful how you talk to your pastor, how you talk to the first lady, how you talk to the bishop how you talk to his wife, how you talk to the people that are in leadership in the body of Christ, because he's saying in so many words that if you curse your father or your mother, you're going to die. It's going to kill you. That word, that ugly word, those ugly phrases, those ugly things that we say to people that we ought to show respect for. Now, let me just be clear. Sometimes the people that are in leadership or the people or even your parents, they're not perfect. Stop expecting them to be perfect. Stop expecting everything they do to be perfect. They're human like you're human. And, and it's okay to say, mama, you hurt me. Daddy, I was offended by what you said. Nothing wrong with saying that. That's honest communication. But when you start going off and cussing, 
yelling and slamming doors and, and, and saying, don't talk to me, leave me alone. When you start saying those ugly things, there's a price to be paid for, the, for that ugliness. So we've got to be careful. The Bible says that we ought to taste our words. The Bible says, let our words be seasoned with salt. In other words, be seasoned in your approach to people because God hears what you say. Let me say that I'm closing. God hears what you say and you will account. The Bible says you will account for the idle words. Oh my God. And I know people will say ugly stuff and then say, oh, I didn't mean it. Yes, you did. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So just apologize and say, I was wrong. I shouldn't have spoken to you that way. It was wrong for me to say that to you. I was wrong, but don't say you didn't mean it because more than likely you did mean it. You meant to say it. You just didn't know how to say it. But God is challenging all of us. I got to close. He's challenging all of us to become effective, godly communicators. Lord, help us to be effective, godly communicators so that you're glorified, not only by what we do in the church, but you're glorified by what we say daily. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. Thank God for each of you and thank God for this word. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. My gracious God, I love you. I thank you for your goodness, your mercy, your love, and your kindness. Thank you, God, for last night's rest. And thank you, Lord God, for being able to be alive today. Thank you for waking us up, Lord. You gave us rest and now you've awakened us this day. And I thank you, God, for being in my right mind. I thank you, God, for being able to get out of the bed and get prepared to join this great cadre of believers, Lord, from all over the world. I thank you today for the morning prayer family and whether we've come by Facebook or Instagram or YouTube or the conference call. Thank you that we're in the prayer room. And I'm asking you, Lord, to oh God, today to flood this prayer room with your presence, your glory, and your honor. I'm asking you, God, to minister in this prayer room today. I'm asking you to relieve the suffering and the pain and, oh God, even the consternation that somebody might be feeling today. The anger, my God, the strife. Oh, God, hallelujah, the confusion that some might be going through. I'm praying, God, that you would minister to the needs today, oh, God, of your sons and daughters in this prayer room. Lord, I'm praying today that you would remember every name that is on the prayer list, God, whether it's been sent by text or messenger or email. God, I want you to minister, Lord God, to everybody in this prayer room today. I'm praying today for the New Hope Way of the Cross Church. I'm praying, my God, for Refuge Temple Church. I'm praying for Refuge Temple of Columbia. I'm praying for Greater Refuge Temple of New York City. I'm praying for Greater Refuge Temple of Charleston, of Washington, D.C., of Jacksonville, of Lakeland, Faith Refuge of Harrisburg. God, I'm praying, my God, for House of Faith, hallelujah, of Maid's Landing. I'm praying, oh God, for Shiloh Temple Apostolic Cathedral. I'm praying for Pastor and Lady Jenkins this morning. I'm praying for Pastor and Lady White today. God, I'm praying that you remember Remember Greater Refuge of Henderson. Remember Pastor and Lady Winston. Remember Greater Ransom Way of the Cross Temple. Remember Bishop, oh God, and Lady Austin today. I'm praying, my God, for every living waters in Newport News, Virginia. I'm praying, my God, for every congregation. I'm praying for St. John's. I'm praying for Macedonia. I'm praying, my God, for every congregation represented in this prayer. The Community Church of Astoria, the Community Church of Island. God, remember them now in the mighty name of Jesus. Calvary Temple, hallelujah of Petersburg. Calvary, hallelujah Outreach Center, my God of Petersburg. Remember these churches today. God, I'm praying today that you remember, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus, Bishop Thomas. Remember Pastor John Howard Sr. Remember Pastor and Mrs. Barrett today. Remember Elder Iris Cash. Remember Lestine Thompson. Remember Brenda Gilliard. Remember Kim Townsend.
Jackson, hallelujah, Newkirk today. Remember Mother Janetta Hicks, Mother Shirley Owens. Remember Stacy and Trayvon Watson. Remember Vanessa Pridgen today, Nasir, Adina, Hazel De Leon. Remember my God, Felicia Moore. Remember Sister Jesse Brisbane. Remember Anthony Nash Sr. today. Remember April Lucinda Pettiford. Remember my God, Sylvia Hood. God, I'm praying today that you remember Sister Sheila Reed, Dr. Jennifer McCarroll Johnson. Give strength and provision. God, remember, hallelujah, Irvin Johnson. God, God, give deliverance. Remember Vanessa Chambers and her colleagues, the entire household of faith. I pray for the Leeward Islands Diocese. I pray for the Ecclesia Diocese. I pray for the bishops, the pastors, the first ladies, the churches, the members, the leaders of Region 7. I pray for the overcoming church, God. Hallelujah in Asheville, Alabama. I pray, my God, for Apostle. Hallelujah and Mother Williams. I pray for the Bible Way Number 1 Church of Augusta. I pray for Apostle Sylvester Norwood. I pray for Veronica, for Brianna, for VJ, for Zamonte. I pray for the Church of our Lord Jesus Christ. God, the Board of Apostles, the Board of Bishops, the Board of Presbyters, the Women's Auxiliaries, the Youth Auxiliaries. God, everybody that serves the music ministry. God, remember this great organization. Remember every congregation and every church, God. I pray today that you remember Bishop Monty Norwood as he travels in South Africa. I pray for Dexter, for Sean, for Bridget, for Susan Maynard. I pray, my God, for the Leon and Reed families. I pray, my God, for Brother Mother Bernard. I pray for Diamond, for Breon, for Tyree, for Bradley, for Robert Davis Jr., for Maurice Barnes today, for Kia. My God, remember Angelica Bradley. Remember Dolores Washington. I pray for Kimmy today. I pray for Latasia. Oh, God, and her entire family, especially her son. Lord God, in the name of Jesus, I pray for Ricky, hallelujah, and Tony. Lord, everybody on the prayer list today. God, save, save, save. Hey, to the utmost right now. God, deliver and make whole in the name of Jesus. Lord, remember, my God, every backslider, reclaim and restore in the name of Jesus Christ. God, remember, my God, everyone that is downcast, burdened, broken. My God, touch, deliver, make whole the addicted. God, deliver them in the name of Jesus. God, stretch out your mighty hand. Lord, remember the sick today. Everywhere, God, there are sick people. My God, battling illnesses, recovering from surgery. But God, we trust you now as the healer. Remember Lady Davis today. Remember Geneva. Remember Azaria today. Remember Dariana. Remember, my God, Phoenicia. Remember Bishop Michael Austin. I pray, God, that you remember Sister Sarah Cord, Mother Florence May, Mother Norma Barry. God, remember Christy Harrison's husband, husband today. Remember, my God, Daria. Remember, my God, Evelyn Johnson, Brianna, Alice Pugh's son, Gary. Remember, Mother, all the, remember, my God, Sister Lynn. Remember, Mariah. Remember, Barbara Daniels, Miss Naomi, Mr. Eddie today, Miss Dalma. Remember, my God, Kwama Adams today. Remember, Kevin Williams, C. Walter, Mark Bowman today, Mary Rogers, Rachel Reese, Rachel Reese today. God, I'm praying for healing right now for Charity Stroman. Stretch out your healing hand in the name of Jesus Christ. Remember Cynthia Jackson Perry. Remember Kathleen Murphy Jackson. God, stretch out your healing in the name of Jesus. Remember Deborah's friend. Remember, my God, Mother Reeves, Mother Bryant, Mother Sharp. Remember Gertrude Austin today. Remember Sandy Jones. Remember Kiara Mitchum today. Lord, Sister Daphne Bullock. Lord God, remember, oh God, and heal. Remember Sister Black, Tina Parrish, Zelna Hart Richardson today. Remember Bridget. Remember Teresa Holt, God. Remember Missionary Bryant. Remember Mother Rashida Moya today. Remember my God, Sister Edwards. God, I lift up Apostle James May in the name of Jesus. Remember Mariah. Remember Mother Lula Jenkins. Remember Jasmine Jones. Remember the Jenkins family, the Jones family in the name of Jesus. I pray for Minister Perkins, for Daniel, for Xavier, for Deacon Adams today, Deacon and Mother Wilson, Deacon Hallelujah and Sister Harrison today. Day. Brother Phil Solomon, I pray for Elder Toll's mother, for Elder Toll, Elder Dokes today. I pray, my God, for Mother Virgie DuBose, Mother, hallelujah, Mary Williams, Mother Lloyd, Mother Perry, Mother Meadows today. Missionary Janet Davis, Missionary Joyce Domingo, Missionary Gail Hardy, Missionary Marlene Roseman, Missionary Jesse Brisbane, Missionary, my God, Hodges today. I pray for Sister Denise McLean, for Mother Elizabeth Wilson. I pray for Brother Carl today. I I pray God for your healing to be upon Pastor 
and Lady Winston, Bishop and Mother D, Apostle and Lady Keith today in the name of Jesus. I pray for Bishop Alfonso Brooks, Bishop Early Dillard, hallelujah, Mother Shirley Clark, Mother Evangeline Jenkins. Lord, I pray, my God, for Lady Andrea Maxwell, for Mother Close today, for Mother Carol Coleman, Sister Shakaya Polk. God, remember Bishop Richard Johnson, Bishop Richard Phillips, Bishop Reginald Griffin. Remember Bishop Clonell Williams, Bishop Irving Taylor, Bishop Gregory Wilder, Bishop Larry Arnold, Bishop Alvin Palmer, Bishop Johnny Davis, Bishop William Jenkins, Bishop Stephen Harper, Bishop Brian Williams, Bishop Thomas Aaron. I pray today for Mother Viola Johnson, Lady J, Lady Williams, Lady Hart, Mother Hardy today, Lady Barbara Vincent, Lady Pamela Davenport, for God, for Lady Deborah Carter today, for Mother Stokes, God. I lift up Apostle Hugh Del Rowe, Apostle Herbert Edwards, Apostle Leroy Joseph, Apostle Charles Williams, Apostle Sylvester Norwood. God, remember Brother Wiggins and Sister Wiggins this morning. God, I'm praying today for healing in the name of Jesus Christ. My God, remember Brother and Mother Sherrod. Remember Mother Garland today. Remember Dr. Hayward, Sister Hayward, Dr. Hayward's mother. Mother Jill and Mother Pride. Remember Elder and Mother Dugan, Elder and Mother Murray today. Brother and Mother Chambers, Mother Carter today. Mother Moorhead, Brother Keith, Lady Staten today. Remember Minister Carr. Remember Elder Tyson and Elder Smith this morning. Mother Foster, Henry J. and Brother Cliff. Mother Tanaj, Mother Holm and Missionary Simmons today. Cynthia, Catherine and Duchess. God, remember in the name of Jesus, Marlette, Maurice, Tony, Dennis today, Kimberly, my God, remember Dennis, God, remember in the name of Jesus Christ, hallelujah, everybody, oh God, remember Cynthia, remember Mother Jackson today, Apostle Moultrie, God, go and visit every hospital, every nursing home, every rehab center, God, in the mighty name of Jesus, even in hospice, Lord, you remain the healer, God, I pray today for the grieving everywhere, God, remember Sister Tammy Patterson, oh God, God, and her family in the loss of her uncle and her cousin. Remember Deacon and Mother Ganey today. Remember Deacon. Deacon Clark, remember Eleanor Simpson, Sister Croxton, Pastor and Lady Fears, and the Greater Ecclesia Church of the Poconos. Remember. Lady Yolanda Thomas and her family. Remember, my God, Sister Marjorie Thomas, the Thomas family. God, Apostle and Mother Clark and the Christ Temple Church family. Remember Mother Beverly Hargrove and the Hargrove family and the Terry family. We pray for the Forehand family, for the Michael family, for the Jenkins family, for the Davenport family, for Deacon Shannon and the Davenports of Connecticut. We pray for Edna Peace today. We pray for Minister Leon Swanigan. We pray, my God, for the Burton family. God, remember Sean and Braylon. God, we pray for Michelle today in the name of Jesus Christ. We lift up grieving people everywhere. Remember, my God, the family of Brock Cadero, Lee Campbell. Remember the Thompson family of Connecticut. Remember the Hallelujah, the Peace family. Remember the Jones family. Remember the Gunter family. Remember Kay Green and family. Remember Miss Cardine Stevenson and family, the Ingram family. God, I pray for Deacon Edward Jones and his family, for the Patterson families, for Sandy and family for the Rankins family, for Minister Jamie Carr and his family, for Mother Sally Carr and her family, for Sister Janelle Rousen and her family today. I pray, my God, for the family of Kevin Ray Rankins, for the family of Patty Richardson, for the family of Frankie Beverly, for Felicia Bellinger today, the family of Gloria Clark, for Gary Clark, God. I pray for the Reeves family. I pray, oh God, for hallelujah, the family of Tony Hallman, the family of Patty Richardson, for Margaret Andrini and family, the family of Aunt Myrtle, the family of Robin Wood. God, we lift up Mother Walk and Mother Moya today. We pray for Jaleesa, for Jackie, for Jerry, for Phoenicia, my God, for Takesha, for Whitney and their families. We pray, my God, for Lady Maxwell, Charles, and Cedric, Mother Close and the family. We pray for Dr. Carter and the family, Apostle Phil, Shekinah, my God, and the family. We pray, Lord, that you remember the Quarles family, Mother Harrell and the family, Mother Grant and the family, the Groover family, the Kramer family, the Hargrove family, the Blunt family, the Bonhams, the Taylors, the Lloyds, the Carters, the Giles family. Remember the Meadows family, the Moyer family, the Perkins family, the Dockery family, Sister Pam, her mom, and her sisters. Remember the White family, Anita and the Brian Hopkins family, Margie and the McLean, Melvin, and Street families, the Ransom family, the Jackson family, the Newkirk family, the Ned family, the Green family. God, we're praying for all of these families, God. The Nunn family, the Umstead family, Brenda and the Alan McNeely family, Sean and Monique and the Gary Porter family. 
family, Trell and Ryan and the Allen Williams family, Tommy and Michelle and the Clark family today. We're praying for the Mays, the Dunlaps, the Purdy's, the Sneeds, the Washington Fields family, the Winninghams, the Bankses, the Ways, the Middletons, the Taylors, the Felix family, the Zapata family, the Mannix, the Boodrums, the Gleans, the Arthurs, the Matherins, the Briggs family, the Taylors, the Phillips, the Josephs, the Davis family, the Allens, the Caldwells, the Hayes, the Moors, God, the Austins, the Harbisons, the Adams, and the Austin family. Every grieving widow, every grieving widower, every child, parent, sibling, loved one. God, remember them now in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God, we pray for the body of Christ today. Every apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher, every bishop and elder, every first lady, all the pastor's children. God, we pray for mothers and missionaries, ministers and deacons. God, we pray that you remember in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We pray, oh God, for every first lady. We pray, God, that you remember everybody, my God, in the body of Christ today. Help the church to use the right words. Help the church, my God, to speak the truth in love. Help the church, my God, to be people of integrity and honesty. Help us not to be driven by flattery, my God, but by truth, oh God, and integrity. I pray, God, for first responders, essential workers, firemen, policemen, EMTs. I pray for school employees and students everywhere. I pray, God, that you remember in the name of Jesus, everybody that works, cover them, keep them, protect them. Everybody that needs a job, God, make an opportunity for them. Everybody on a fixed income and that needs provision, God, make a way. And everybody that's homeless, God, open a door. And God, I pray for this troubled world today. Trouble everywhere. My God, but we know, still know that you are the great physician. We know you are the bomb in Gilead. So God, heal the land. Heal the land. Oh God, from sin. Heal the land. For, oh God, from hatred and jealousy and violence. Heal the land from injustice. Heal the land from racism and sexism. And let your church be the light of the world and the salt of the earth. God, we need you today like never before. Lord God, cover us, keep us, and protect us. And we give your name the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Everybody on this line, come on and give God praise right now. Everybody on this line, come on and give God praise right now. He is worthy of our praise. Yes, he is. He is worthy of our praise. He is worthy of our praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. This is my declaration for today. Lord, keep me in the light. Lord, keep me in the light. Don't allow negative speech, ungodly speech, hallelujah, to plunge me into darkness, but God, keep me in the light. Hallelujah. Let my speech, let my attitude, let my behavior reflect your grace, your power, your deliverance, hallelujah, to the end that I reflect who you are and is seen, God, and I can be found, hallelujah, right in your sight. By your grace, God, is by your grace, but help me to live it every day so that you are glorified, hallelujah, in my life. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. Thank God for each of you. I'm trusting that this biblical meditation and prayer has blessed you and that your day is off to a great start. Look, you can stay connected to Refuge Temple all day today. This prayer service is available on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram. Thank God for those that join us by conference call. Keep coming, keep sharing the numbers and stay in prayer with us. You can also stay connected through our podcast, Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, and Spotify. All of this available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Look, let me thank everybody that seeds and sows and shares with this ministry. Your gifts help us to do the things that we need to do. And we thank God for them and we thank God for you. And if you desire to be a blessing, you can mail a gift to Refuge Temple Church, P.O. Box 3552, Burlington, North Carolina, 2721. Five. That's P.O. Box 3552, Burlington, North Carolina, 27215. You can also
also give online. Our website is www.refugetemple, N is in North, C is in Carolina.com, refugetemplenc.com. And you can give on the donate page. If you have the GiveLify app, just type Refuge Temple Burlington. You'll see a picture of the church and you can make your gift there. Or if you have Cash App, our Cash App is dollar sign, capital O N E, capital R E F U G E, one refuge, one refuge. And you can make your gift there. And we thank you for your giving, but we thank you most of all for being connected to morning prayer because God is using the prayer to bless people all over the world. All over the world, God is using this prayer to connect, to bring together, and to get prayers through so that people's lives can be blessed. So please keep coming, keep sharing, and keep praying. And as you pray, pray for me. Pray for Lady Davis. Pray for our children. Pray for my father. Pray for my sisters, my in-laws, our nieces, our nephews, our entire family. Pray for Refuge Temple that God would continue to bless us. And let's pray one for another that the grace of God might keep us in the center of his will. The Lord allow our speech to be a reflection of his grace and our redemption. Until next time, this is Pastor Davis. God bless each of you. Shalom. Shalom.